Hey everybody, welcome to my video on aggregate consumption functions. Uh, we're going to set this up for in principles class. We'll have a little bit of algebra, but not a lot. Uh, so let's get started. What is a consumption function? Well, we're going to link GDP and consumption together with some math. So the simplest form is just that your consumption is equal to some function of GDP. And specifically, we're going to assume that if your GDP or your income rises, you'll consume more. So it's going to be an upward sloped function. Let's start with something to do with that slope. Let's have a term called MPC. This is the marginal propensity to consume. And what it measures is the change in consumption over the change in income. What's the point of this? It tells you how much of your next dollar that you will spend. The word marginal always means like the next one. So what is the marginal propensity to consume? How much of your next dollar will you spend? If you have two points, one of them is that GDP is 100 and consumption is 50. And then there's a second point where GDP is 120 and C is 66, then what's your marginal propensity to consume? MPC is equal to change in consumption over change in income, which is equal to 66 minus 50, that's new minus old for consumption, divided by 120 minus 100, that's new minus old for income, is equal to 16 over 20, is equal to 0.8, suggesting that you spend 80% of your next dollar. Okay, so we've got that way of measuring how likely people are to spend their money. Higher marginal propensity to consume means you spend a lot more of it. A very relevant concept is your marginal propensity to save, which is how much of your next dollar do you save. And it's pretty easy because you can either save your money or spend it. So MPC plus MPS will have to equal 1. So your MPS is equal to 1 minus your MPC. An example would be if your MPC is 0.8, your MPS would be 1 minus 0.8, which is just 0.2, suggesting that you save 20% of your income, which makes sense if you're spending 80% of it. So let's get an actual equation for our linear approximation of the consumption function. C of Y is equal to C, and C is equal to some letter A plus MPC times Y. Let's break these pieces down real quick. I'm going to start, I'm going to put a graph here. We're going to have a straight line. It's a linear function. So we have GDP on the X axis, consumption on the vertical axis. Here is your consumption line, C of Y. Now the Y, that's your input variable, your independent variable. That's the X axis variable. It's just GDP or income. Your MPC is the slope of your consumption function. It tells you rise over run, rise of MPC divided by run of one, it tells you how fast your consumption changes when you change income. And this last term, A, we call autonomous spending or autonomous consumption. It is the intercept on your graph and it is the part of your consumption that is independent of income. That thing is there. It's the height in your graph. So there's a consu consumption function in a nutshell. That's pretty much all I have to teach, but I want to go through a couple of examples just to help firm some of these ideas up. If consumption is equal to 1,000 plus 0.6y, what is c when y equals 100? or when y equals 500, or when y equals 1,000. Well, c of 100 is equal to 100, sorry, 1,000 plus 0.6 times 100 is 1,000 plus 60 is 1,060. c of 500 is 1,000 plus 0.6 times 500 is 1,000 plus 300 plus 1,300. c of 1,000 is 1,000 plus 0.6 times 1,000 equals 1,000 plus 600 equals 1,600. So whatever values are in there, you can just plug them in, use a calculator, and it'll tell you your consumption level. 
let's do a little bit more of a complicated example now. What if I give you a function and you have to graph it? Can you graph this with at least two points labeled? C equals 500 plus 0.8 Y. Well, that 500 is the intercept. It's the autonomous consumption. Goes right there. When Y equals zero, C equals 500. Now, what about the slope on here? This 0.8. Well, we could mark it on the graph like this, and there's a point eight and a one. There you go, you've got it. But I also wanted two points labeled. So if you ever have to do this, if I don't direct you to pick a specific point, I always just say pick a number where the math comes out easy. A thousand is often one, because it makes for easy math for all those zeros. So if y equals a thousand, I can find the c paired with a thousand, and that will give me a second point. If y equals 1,000, then c equals 500 plus 800 is 1,300. There's my y of 1,000. It's paired with the c of 1,300. And there's my second point. So yeah, I think that's a good enough intro to our consumption functions. In my next video, I'm going to incorporate the consumption function into the ex uh, aggregate expenditures curve. And then in the video after that, we'll build the Keynesian cross model. So here we go, guys. Macro is about to go a little crazy for us. It's going to be fun. Thanks for watching. Good luck and happy econing.